Hi, my name is Michelle, and today I will be talking to you about the multi-store model of memory. This video is made for AQA, but I'm sure it will be helpful for whatever board you're studying if you're looking at memory. There will be a series of videos and instructional handouts and workbooks available, and you can find out more about these on my site at www.kent-tutor.co.uk. I'll make sure to write that down later. So, what do you need to know about the models of memory? Well, you need to know about the multi-store model of memory. You need to be able to discuss the concepts of encoding, capacity, and duration. And you need to be able to evaluate this model. In addition to this, you need to be able to outline the working memory model and evaluate the both of them together. So, today we're just going to look at a bit of an overview of the MSM, which is the multi-store model. It's going to be short and it's going to be simple. For the rest of the videos in this series, please do check out my site or my YouTube channel where I will be uploading them all. So, to start you off, here's an interesting fact. I recently got a puppy and while wondering how much she remembered of our days together, I did some research. It turns out that your pet dog can only remember events for around two minutes. I mean, sure, she remembers who you are and how you treat her, but specific events are gone. It's even worse for cats, birds, and other creatures, where the average memory span is just 27 seconds, and I'm pretty sure that's mine. So hopefully by the end of this video series, you're gonna be able to explain how it is that your pets can remember you, and how they're so good at remembering when dinner time is, which is a rather handy little trick there. So let's get to it. The multi-store model was proposed by Atkinson and Schifrin in 1968. Now, we'd spent a long time trying to explain how memory worked, and they needed a model to show the rather compartmentalized view of memory that they'd spent a long time developing. This theory became the most well-known and one of the most prominent explanations for memory in the world. Now, the memory, the multi-store model of memory is made up of three stores. Firstly, the sensory store. This is a collection of thoughts, feelings, and half-seen things you have chanced upon in the world. Through attention, information gets passed from this store to the short-term memory. It's a bit like when you realise someone is calling you from downstairs and you hadn't heard them over your music, or those pictures that once you've seen the illusion you can no longer unsee it. It's called your attention to it. The second store is the short-term memory. Now here, mainly acoustic, which is sound information, gets stored. And it gets stored for around 20 seconds, so everything I'm saying is going to be in your short-term memory for around 20 seconds. You can only fit a certain number of items in your short-term memory. Now, think of trying to remember that shopping list you get sent out with, or trying to remember that, that person's phone number. If you rehearse the information, it will stay in your short-term memory for longer. And I know we've all been there, repeating a number until you can write it down. If you keep rehearsing it, it will transfer to your long-term memory. And I don't know about you, but it took me a lot of repetition to remember my own phone number. Now, the third store is the long-term memory. And it's thought to be our permanent storage of memory. We don't know much about it, we don't know how long it can hold things or how many things it can hold, but what we do know is it has a rather uncanny way to remember Spice Girls lyrics, or that unfortunate moment you heard a Justin Bieber song that got stuck in your head. Those lyrics seem to remain with you forever, so beware. The long-term memory is like putting something in the attic for storage. If you want to use it, you need to get it out again. This can be done by retrieving the information to your short-term memory, a bit like when Do You Want to Be My Lover comes up on your Spotify Discover list and you start singing along. You're retrieving that information. As you well know, we do lose information, we forget things, and it's done by a few processes. The first one is decay. And this is where the information sort of just falls apart and fades away, it's gone. The second way is by displacement. Now, something comes along and knocks the information out of your short-term memory, like suddenly noticing a chocolate bar on the counter when you're trying to write a script for a video rem and remember what you're saying. <laughs> and finally, retrieval failure. It's there, but it's not 
coming out again. This can give you that awkward feeling of knowing you know it, but not knowing what you know. It's a bit like remembering the name of someone you haven't seen in ages, and maybe you didn't really care about them to begin with. Anyway, these three processes all make up what we informally call forgetting. So that is how you forget things. And there you have it. That is the multi-store model of memory. In the exams you're about to sit, it's likely you'll get questions on some part of the MSM. Describe, outline, evaluate. We've only discussed AO1 information here, but in the other videos I'll be uploading, we'll go into more AO2 and AO3 depth. One tip I'm going to give you for this part of the exam is to memorize the diagram of the multi-store model. Pull it out and annotate it in the exam if you get any questions on outline, describe or discuss. It's so much quicker. Anyway, that's about it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, share or do something and come back and check out what else I have. I hope to see you for the next one.